Welcome to the Steroids Podcast with your host, Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. Boom! Boom! Let's get started here. The Steroids Podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Guide to Roids, 109 page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. Now, for the first time in bodybuilding history, you have someone with no corporate interests and no obligation to please anyone, not walking on eggshells to not offend. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the information, the whole information, the whole truth, not a full truth and a half truth, full truth. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the keys to the Lamborghini, gives you the information, and lets you decide what to do with it. It's a crime this information has been suppressed this long. Now let's get on with the podcast. I had a really good phone call consult with someone today, and I wanted to talk to the podcast listeners about what I talked about. So it was someone who had been utilizing anabolics, etc. Everything, you know, everything that bodybuilders use. And they'd gone too hard. And they ended up with a really horrible medical situation. Um, And, you know, they lost a lot of muscle. And then when they got out of the hospital, they were right back on the gear again. Um, And I understand what's happening there. Because when you're a bodybuilder, your everything that's going on in your life is towards building those muscles up and getting that body fat down. And so you've invested so much into this. You've invested years into this. You've invested so many blood, sweat and tears with training and dieting. Um, you've invested money into supplements, roids, etc. And you know, having that go away basically any work that you've worked for go away can feel like the end of the world when you're a bodybuilder and can feel like I can't let that happen but I wanted to put you guys at ease a little bit on that by just talking a little bit about how muscle memory works so when you're natural What you'll notice is that if you get bigger and you make progress and then you like stop working out or something, you will lose that progress and getting back to where you were before is very hard. It's basically the same difficulty as the first time that you did it. So maybe it's a little bit easier, you know, but not a lot. Basically, if you lose your gains when you're a natural, you have to work exactly as hard as you did the first time to get them back. So most of us have experienced that when we were natural. And then I remember when I was going hardcore bodybuilding, uh, you know, on all the gear and, um, you know, that, that was the, the main thing, you know, that I was thinking about, you know, was my, my meals, my training, my gear every day, you know, that I did have a fear of losing some of my gains, of going on a cruise even. I had a fear of going on a cruise because I actually believed that the cosmetic effect of the steroids was part of my muscle. So (laughs) this is kind of funny stuff talking about this, but, you know, several years ago, um, you know, or maybe five years ago, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when, but, you know, I believed that if I took those roids and I got my muscles looking that way, that those were my muscles and those were the shape of my muscles. I was not willing to admit that the cosmetic effect of having the gear in my blood was what made my muscles have that shape. 
So if I would go on a cruise or stop taking gear or, or something like that, it was very psychologically disturbing for me because I felt like I was losing my gains and I wasn't, those weren't my gains. Those were the cosmetic effects of the roids or other PEDs being in my bloodstream. That's what those, that shape of that muscle has, the on look that all bodybuilders want, the look of being on that bodybuilders want. That, that's not our muscle mass, that shape, that awesome pop, that look. That is the cosmetic effect of those roids in your blood. So that made me feel like, man, it's hard to get a cruise in because if I go off for a month, I look different. And I believe that these muscles are mine and the shape that I have when I'm on is mine and I built this. And so having that go away for even one month is very psychologically disturbing and something I, I don't want to do. That was what was going through my mind. However, now that I'm a bit older and a bit more mature and had a bit more experience, I know that this is not true. I know that my perception was incorrect. So the protein muscle mass that your muscles have does not go away when you lose that shape, okay? And we've talked about it before, and this is why it's really important that we, we like have this word, the cosmetic effect of steroids, because there is a cosmetic effect of having these things in your blood. And it doesn't mean that your muscles are now shaped like that or something like that. No, no it actually means that those substances are in your blood and they're making your muscles look like that, okay? But our actual muscle mass is not dependent on those substances. It is dependent on testosterone, um, or maybe a bit of testosterone and DECA, depending on how advanced you are. Uh, but the actual muscle mass is there regardless of if you have those cosmetic steroids in your bloodstream. And so I've talked about hibernation mode before. I've talked about muscles going into hibernation mode. And this is another phrase, term, that we really need to internalize is that our muscles can go into hibernation mode and it doesn't mean that we lost protein muscle tissue mass. Hibernation mode is what occurs when we do not have high amounts of androgens in our blood, high amounts of anabolic steroids in our blood. Our muscles go into hibernation mode. They lose their shape. They get smaller. They look flat. The shoulders aren't popping out. The shoulders and the triceps and the biceps and the forearms don't have a look like steps on a staircase with angles all over the place because those effects are not actually muscle. Those are effects of drugs. Having those things is having those drugs in your bloodstream, which then changes the appearance of your muscles. But they're not actually those, when your muscles look like that, that's not actually the muscle, you know, because you can go off of those substances and have your look change, but you didn't lose any muscle mass your look changed because those cosmetic, remember that word, cosmetic effects of steroids changed the way you look, changed the way your muscles look while they're in your bloodstream, which is why bodybuilders go on everything during contest prep. That's why they go on basically everything is because these things have cosmetic effects and you want to look the best. You want to have the best cosmetic appearance on the stage. So, you know, a lot of bodybuilders go on basically everything under the sun when they're... <laughs> 
<laughs> preparing for their contest. It's because they want to get those cosmetic effects. So remember that these are cosmetic effects of these hormones, these unnatural hormones. These non-bioidentical hormones have these cosmetic effects. And although they do make your muscles look really cool and really awesome, it's just a cosmetic effect. It's something that the drug is doing to you while it's in you, but it's not actually your muscle. So when you go off of them and you don't have that cosmetic effect anymore, it's not that you lost muscle. It's that the muscles just aren't volumized from having the cosmetic effect of those hormones in your bloodstream anymore. So we need to really internalize this as bodybuilders so that we can get comfortable with things like cruising um, or, or taking a little break, like a month, six weeks or so, something like that. And then we can be not so concerned about losing muscle or going backwards when we've put all this blood, sweat, and tears into our thing. And then we can be more moderate with, uh, and, and just more, more safe less shotgun approach and, and less just going all out and feeling like there's, there's no other option because you know, you've put so much blood, sweat and tears into it. If we can really internalize this cosmetic effect of unnatural hormones, non bioidentical hormones and what they do to your muscle while they're in your bloodstream, then we can become, I think more comfortable with the idea of cruising and stuff like that. Um, so the, again, the, the muscle tissue doesn't actually have that look. Um, but, but the, the muscle tissue, even when you do cruise, it's just that protein tissue that goes, that doesn't, it doesn't go away. That stays. And to gain confidence with this, what is good for you is to try doing little cruises and then snapping back to what you looked like before and gaining this confidence that's like, hey, even though this does happen to me where my appearance changes, I actually know that within seven days of getting that stuff back in my system, I can look a lot different. And within three to four weeks, I can make an, an, an enormous difference in my appearance. And having uh, confidence in that. So, you know, when you're on a cruise, it can be like, yeah, I'm on a cruise. And so, you know, I'm not looking so crazy right now. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking like the number one big gorilla in the gym. Like I like to be, but that's okay. Um, you, you know, actually I'm really confident that, you know, if you give me three weeks, if you give me two months, if you give me three months, I can be the number one gorilla uh, in the in the gym again. Uh, you, you know, having this kind of a mindset uh, because of experiencing this, where we go on and off the cosmetic effect of of steroids and do cruises and stuff like that. Okay, and then the other thing is that muscle that has been built on steroids is not the same as muscle that has been built off of steroids, okay? And so this is muscle that have been built on steroids. Let me make that very clear because this is not relevant to muscle that has been built on insulin as insulin is very popular because it's very powerful. And it's like Trenbolone where once we get a hold of it and we get a little bit of it, it's like, oh, this is not so bad. And the effects are really powerful. And so there's a promotion of escalating dosages, and then things do get pretty negative um, at a certain point. I start to experience um, very severe side effects on high dosages of trenbolone and insulin, and or either either or, you know, and um, so the mus the, the the muscle that that you that you build on roids, it is permanently different than muscle that a natural has, okay? So this only occurs though when serious gains have been made on roids, okay? 
So this is why I really stress, like, you have to get better at your lifts. You have to get better at weightlifting. Because if you don't, and you're just doing this thing where you go to the gym and you dick around and you get a pump and you feel good and you work out the way that you want to work out, the way that you like doing it because it's your stress release or whatever, um, you know, this is not going to permanently change your muscles when you're using steroids. You have to cause major progressive overload past anywhere near where you would have been, where it would have been possible to be naturally. So. You, I know that because this is hard. No one wants to do hard stuff. Everyone wants to find an easy way. That's why when you look on the internet, it's like 30 minutes to learn this new skill or like 30 minutes to be rich for the rest of your life and never have to work again or something. Because that is the natural human tendency is to want to get these things without doing hard work. And so that's why people, you know, when they hear these things about like, wait, I have to have the ability to bench press three plates? and have the ability to squat four plates to depth. Um, you know, you don't have to be doing those every day, but do you have to be able to do them if you tried? Yeah, if you wanna be a big bodybuilder, you have to possess that kind of force production. You don't have to actually do those lifts, but you know, if it, your life came down to it and somebody said, you know, you gotta do those lifts, you would have to be able to do them at those strengths if you want to be a big bodybuilder. There are no big bodybuilders that do not have the ability to bench press three plates for reps. It doesn't exist. Um, do all bodybuilders bench press? No. Some bodybuilders never bench press, but all bodybuilders that are really big have the ability to bench press three plates if they wanted to do it, okay? And so this is the kind of training, getting better at weightlifting, increasing your gym performance. This is the kind of training that when you use steroids at the same time, you permanently change your muscles, okay? So if someone cut your muscle in half and looked at it under a microscope and cut a natural person's muscle in half who had been weightlifting and looked at it under a microscope, under the microscope, your muscle that had been built on steroids would look different even if you stopped using steroids for 10 or 15 years. Let me say that again. If you had used steroids to build your muscles and then you stopped using steroids for 10 to 15 years and you looked at your muscle tissue under a microscope and compared that with a natural gym goers muscle tissue under a microscope, your muscle, your steroid built muscle would look different 10 to 15 years later under a microscope than the naturals. Okay. When you lift on anabolic steroids, you increase the amount of DNA and nucleus in your muscle cells, okay? So the muscles permanently are primed to respond, okay? Basically what happens is because of this increase in the DNA and the muscle cell nuclei is the muscles have this information permanently about how big they got on steroids and how to do it. What how to respond. The muscles have been permanently changed with this information. And when someone reintroduces those steroids, that training, and that food, 10 to 15 years later, if they've totally stopped, their body snaps back to the way that it was before. Now, if you're 50 years old, and before you were 35 years old using steroids and then you took a 15 year break, there could be, you know, there could be not quite as good because now you're 50, whereas before you were 35. And the, the human body may, may not, just not, you know, not be functioning quite, quite as well anymore. But that, that's not a muscle problem. Uh, that's not a, a steroid problem or something. That, that's just a, you're aging a little bit. So that can be the, the, the you know, something that can, throw, make it a little, not quite exactly, but, um, the general thing and guys who have gone off and gone back on know this. And so you look at the golden era and you see pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was Mr. Olympia, but you look at him when he's not at his contest, he doesn't look anything close to what he looked like when he was at the contests and the off season, he didn't only lose muscle mass. He didn't only lose muscle shape. He didn't only lose vascularity. He also gained body fat and looked significantly softer. But 
he would look the way he was supposed to look when he was on the bodybuilding stage, okay? And then you have guys who make comebacks, you know, guys who, um, you know, they've been bodybuilders, but then they stop for a while and they come back. You know, again, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have, uh, uh, you have Kevin Lavrone, uh, you have other guys. Um, but you notice that these guys, when they start up the super subs and they start back up the protein again and they start up the clean carbs again and the good fats again and they start up the training, their body snaps back to the way that it was when they were last on those dosages. It's, the body is permanently primed to go to that when those chemicals are introduced to your body again. So if you lose 30 pounds of muscle and you're taking steroids to gain those mus the 30 pounds of muscle, those were gained on steroids, okay? And now you lose them. If you will go back to that same kind of steroid use again and start the training and the eating, it is not going to be hard to get back to where you were. The body will automatically basically do it. It will just kind of automatically take you there again because the information has been stored in your muscle cells on how to be when those kind of conditions are present. So this is how we get, we get, um, it, people know this, man. People know, people know this. Uh, you, you know, we, we have guys, you know, these days, you, you know, and, and it's, it's like, you know, never come off or something like that or something like, but you know what the crews are taking a break. It's a really good thing, man. And what I'm trying to tell you guys right now is that you don't have to be so nervous that all the blood, sweat and tears that you put into that body that you put into those muscles are going to be in, in vain. They're going to be worthless or they're going to be uh, it, it was, you, you know, you, you just, it's gone and it was all for nothing or something. It's not like that. When you have built up these large quantities of muscle, these large quantities of strength, and you use steroids while you're doing it, that information on how big your muscles got and how strong your muscles got is physically permanently stored inside the muscle tissue. And when the super subs are added back in, and the protein is added back in, the body just goes to where it was, okay? So, you guys know, I've talked about this before, that I stopped doing, personally me, I stopped doing, you know, like hard blasting, like balls out uh, bodybuilding training, and well, not training, I still train the same way, uh, bodybuilding steroid use, hormone use, okay? So I stopped doing balls out hormone use and shit, um, about two and a half years ago. And, but I've, I've dabbled a little bit, you know, I've used a little bit of something, something here and there, you know, a little bit of Winstrol, Primabolin, Anavar, something like that. I've used a little bit. And, um, when I use that stuff, it doesn't take long f for, for my body to start changing again. And, um, if, if I just, you know, if I take, something comparable at all, at all. Like if I took like a 50 milligrams Winstrol, 50 milligrams Anivar, um, testosterone, 750 milligrams, Primobolin and like 300 milligrams. See that that's not the huge dosages that I used to take, but even just taking that little amount like that would be enough to get me looking again like some kind of total fucking freak with it within like six to eight weeks you, you know like like really like a cyborg and um that's because the information is stored there i mean yeah i could take more and then i could get back you know to like where i was before you know that might take like three to six months or something like that um probably on the lower end of that and so 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 that that could, that I could do that. But again, like I haven't been trying to, to do that. And so I haven't been consuming those, uh, PEDs in those dosages. But let me tell you that even, you know, a fraction of what I used to be taking, um, because my muscles know what to do. They're different. If you look at them under a microscope, 
they are different than a natural's. All, I don't. I don't even. I, could, I can just add a fraction of this stuff back into my system, and do the training, and you know, get my protein back up to 400 grams a day again, and everything. And it, it's like the gains. It's just. It's just like they just come. I, I don't. I don't have to try that hard. That's what I'm trying to say. Is to get get because I've been somewhere before. When these when these things are back in my body again. I don't even have to try that hard to have my body go back to where it was. So I'm telling you guys this so that you can internalize and, and know about these, these things that happen in your body and get more comfortable with cruising. And like, for example, like if you have health problems or something like that, you can be comfortable taking a break and letting yourself heal and, and get better. So that then, because, uh, Basically, too, another thing is that when you have severe health problems, your whole life is stopped and you just wish, I wish I could be like a normal person. And that that's a very, very hard place to be when when that's happened and, and you're wishing that you could be like a normal person, not sick or something like that. Right. After after damage has been done, wishing I wish I wasn't sick. If, and, um, so that's what I'm saying is that the health is so important, right? So absolutely. I understand that, you know, hardcore bodybuilding, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, all of these substances are required, you know, and everything. But what I'm trying to tell you is that taking a little break is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It actually helps you. Um, when, when you take a break and you let your body, completely rejuvenate again and be back to normal it's actually primed to grow better and 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 it does like grow grow much better um so taking the cruises is very very good thing to do and guys don't be afraid of it um if you need to you know if you're having some kind of a problem take a cruise or if you've been on cycle for a long time take a cruise again it's not going to be some kind of thing where, you know, all these blood, sweat and tears that you've spent getting these muscles, it's just going to all be in vain. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. That's not the way that it is. Fortunately, once you've been somewhere on steroids before getting back to that same place on steroids again is not, it's, it's a fraction of how hard it was the first time. Okay. So let's get on to some questions here. John asks, I watched your old super draw video on YouTube and a few others talked about sugar urges that came on really strong. Also, you've talked about super draw requires carbs in order to make it work right. Unlike trend, um, where trend can work and do its thing on very few carbs. I'm blasting 600 milligrams testosterone and anthe and 300 milligrams sustenon and just 10 milligrams of super draw a day. What would happen if I added 500 to a thousand milligrams metformin a day? I'm curious. Does that react in any way with the super draws? Okay. So let's start at the beginning of your question. Um, yeah, you know, trend will kind of do its thing regardless of if you give it carbs or not. Um, you know, super draw is still strong without carbs. Me and myself, I've definitely done ketogenic diet um, on super draw and it does work. It does, it does still work, but it, you know, to really get the most out of super draw because it's such a powerful, um, nutrient partitioner and body recomposition agent. Actually, I think it does. And, and strength gainer, like, you know, it does, you know, it does everything that you would want a hormone to do. Uh, like the, the, the side effect, the bad thing about super draw is that it's more toxic than like basically the other gear. It also doesn't give like female side effects, you know, so you're not getting like estrogen problems. You're not getting progesterone, prolactin problems with super draw. There's a couple, uh, you know, uh, genetic anomalies out there who do get uh, a little bit of prolactin side effects, but for the, you know, 90%, uh, you don't get those from super draw. So, um, uh, you, you know, it's, it gives insane strength gains, insane, dense, dry muscle tissue gains. It gives fat loss. Um, 
you know, it pretty much does, you know, it does everything that trend does, but it does it more powerfully, but it only can, you know, you can only last so long on super draw. Whereas on trend, you can last a lot longer as far as like how long can someone take it? Um, so that's, you know, really the, the difference there is that, you know, someone's going to burn out on super draw a lot faster than they're going to burn out on trend balloon. But typically when guys find out about super draw, because it's still not really like that well known how powerful it is. And it's kind of like flies on the radar because it's like, Oh, that used to be like a pro hormone or something, but it, it's actually like basically like the most, you know, like trend balloon would be like the most powerful substance but that's because you can use it long term for bodybuilding. You know, trembolone is the most powerful substance for bodybuilding. But on a short term basis, actually, superdrol is the most um, powerful substance for bodybuilding. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but in order for you to like really get those strength gains and everything that can be had for, from it, because the strength gains are like you know really amazing, and if you do not eat carbohydrates when you're doing uh, super draw, you won't be able to maximize or fully experience those strength gain benefits that it brings to the table. Um, and that's what I mean by in order to get super draw to do its thing, it needs some carbs. But And then the other thing that was mentioned is like, is there low blood sugar? Okay, and so for guys that get low blood sugar frequently, if you do a ketogenic diet, that goes away, your body figures out in, uh, how to like keep your blood sugar stable. So like when you're on a ketogenic diet, your blood sugar is super stable. If you're normally someone that goes like hypoglycemic a little bit, like on, on a regular basis, um, where, where like, you know, you might just be walking around and all, uh, if you go too hungry too long, like you might get shaky, you might kind of get like break out into a sweat and you might feel like an incredible amount of anxiety, um, you, you know, and even things can like kind of start if it gets really bad. Like, typically, this doesn't happen if the person doesn't have diabetes. But for a normal person, like it, it can get bad enough. Yeah, where you, there can be like maybe a little bit of numbness even. Um, but typically, it's pretty much just the anxiety and like the sweats and shakiness, you know, and then your body will kick in a, a big burst of adrenaline to try to get your blood sugar back up. And that will actually be a contributor, you know with the shakiness and anxiety. Um, but yeah, that that's, I'm just describing like what hypoglycemia, mild hypoglycemia, um, would feel like just for like a normal person. So that, cause some people don't know like what we're talking about, uh, when we talk, we use that word. So I think most people have experienced what I just described though, at some point before. Um, so like trend and, uh, super jaw, cause hypoglycemia because they're so extreme at potentiating insulin in muscle cells that you know when your blood is flowing by and there's there's glucose in that and the muscle cells are so much sensitive more sensitive to carbohydrates and to insulin than um, the other cells in your body that they just steal all that glucose out of your bloodstream. They just take it out. So it's like you can you can experience on Trenbolone and Superdrol those hypoglycemic effects um, when using those. And that is super uncomfortable. So, you know, yeah, the actually, so people want to know, like, how do you make hypoglycemia stop? So the most foolproof way is to go on a ketogenic diet because... When you go on a ketogenic diet, your body knows how to keep your blood sugar stable. And, you know, it's no longer like messing with insulin, you know, because on a ketogenic diet, you're not getting big insulin releases. And it, you, usually your body's trying to like, you um, like, you know, if you eat, like you'll, you'll, uh, your body will release insulin. But like, it's, especially if you're eating like sugars and other processed foods and stuff, your body will like send out too much insulin. And um, like for the amount of food that has been consumed. And so you might get this like reactive hypoglycemia where after you've had a big carbohydrate meal, then, you know, a few hours later you get like some symptoms of hypoglycemia or something like that, which 
is also really uncomfortable. So, you, you know, re really the less processed foods you eat, the, the less like of like a slave to this you will be um, because th that, that can be like a huge problem for like for, for some people actually the worst or like the thing that is hurting with dieting is that they can't stop this hypoglycemia. And so like they're, when they're trying to diet, they're, they're like seriously suffering um, because their body when it's eating carbohydrates has this tendency to produce too much insulin. Um, and um, so they'll get this, this reactive hypoglycemia. And so they'll be, you know, really suffering when they're trying to lose weight. And for those people switching over to a ketogenic diet, which will totally take care of that, um, will like really help you. It'll like solve your issue. Like if that's what's keeping you from having successful dieting, um, and then, you know, the, otherwise if, you know, just for normal people that are using super draw using trend and, you know, most of them aren't going to be on a ketogenic diet, like how do you then like prevent hypoglycemia? Well, you have to like keep like some kind of like candy on you, like some kind of like sugar candy on you. Like the fastest way to resolve hypo hypoglycemia is with a juice box, but that can be a little harder to carry around on you all the time. But I mean, a lot of times bodybuilders have got some candies on them, to be honest, <laughs> like some Mentos or something like that, you know, some, you know, something to bring your blood sugar up fast, Smarties or something like that. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much what you have to do uh, if, you know, you're just eating normally is, just something, you know, a simple sugar that can absorb into your bloodstream, you know, super fast and resolve that, you know, in five to 15 minutes. So, yeah. And then um, you're asking about if you added to met metformin. So metformin is not a hypoglycemic. So that's the thing with metformin is even though it does increase insulin sensitivity and um, it it reduces the amount of insulin that needs to be released to digest the food that you eat. Um, it doesn't cause hypoglycemia. Um, whatever there is about um, its pharmacology, um, it does not, metformin does not produce a hypoglycemic effect. Actually, it seems to, anecdotally, it seems to stabilize blood sugars being on metformin. So if like, like blood sugars like going up and down, being on metformin seems to like stable that out. So yeah, yeah, you don't have to, you like if you were thinking like, oh, okay, well, would that make the hypoglycemia from like trend or super draw worse being on metformin? Like probably not, you, you know, you, you know, everybody's different, you know, maybe for one guy it could a little bit, but it's, it's not going to be doing it in any kind of like huge way. Okay, next question is from Jonas. Jonas asks, bro, I only did insulin a couple of cycles last year. Nothing crazy. It messed up my face and my gut. I got a lot bigger, but I'm disappointed that my face and my gut got permanently bigger. LOL. Yeah, so when you have high systemic IGF-1 levels for too long, um, that just like makes things start growing. So like you have like intramuscular IGF-1 levels and those are the things that like taking trend, taking uh, steroids and um, actually even taking human growth hormone um, stimulates that intramuscular IGF-1 where the muscle cells themselves actually produce the IGF-1 inside themselves. And then you have a different kind of IGF-1, which is the kind of uh, IGF-1 that the liver manufactures and that that's the systemic IGF one that's measurable in the bloodstream. And so growth hormone also stimulates that kind to be produced as well. And then, um, things like, uh, insulin, uh, also really, uh, produce, uh, a stimulation effect to IGF one. So, you know, actually if someone usually uses growth hormone alone, just growth hormone alone, um, usually the IGF one increases, but not that much. You usually the, their systemic IGF one, you know, increases maybe like usually like less than double or something like that. 
you know, it's not a huge, huge increase um, for the majority of the day. There may be a, a temporary spike. Um, but um, when, you, when you combine that growth hormone with the insulin injections too, now you do get a massive um, increase in the amount of systemic IGF-1 that you have. When they're taken together like that, especially the long-acting insulins with the growth hormone, it causes a huge increase in systemic IGF-1 levels. And so now, you know, instead of just having the high IGF-1 levels in your muscle cells, you know, it's all over your body. And IGF-1 just causes stuff to grow. And so like, you know, acromegaly is when someone has uh, usually a pituitary gland tumor that makes them secrete an uncontrollable amount of growth hormone, which causes their liver to produce um, an uncontrollable amount of IGF-1, which then causes them to have um, the typical acromegaly side effects, which is a deformed face, you know, a, a deformed nose, deformed ears, and um, like, you know, hands, uh, the wrong size feet, the wrong size stuff. You, you know, you see like these kind of like, um, in some you know, extreme, you know, like extreme bodybuilders, you know, you'll see like kind of like an, an hourglass shape actually on their face where like the area where the brain is and then like the area where the, the temple is kind of like goes in a little bit. And then the area where the jaw is then goes like out again. So there's like kind of like an hourglass look there, like from the top of their head down uh, because of like the jaw and the skull growing because that's part of acromegaly. And when, when you use long acting insulin together with high dose growth hormone um, and you do that for like sustained periods of time, like, you know, even this guy, Jonas, he just did it for, he says a couple cycles. So let's say he did it for a year or something then or, you know, maybe like nine months, six months, I don't know. But, and it sounds like he's probably very susceptible to this side effect because it's more like, it's more like, you know, one year or more would typically be like when these kind of things would start being seen. Um, but yeah, like, like when you combine growth hormone and insulin, um, it really, uh, it starts being like permanent side effects where, you know, like you're, you can have like enlargement of things and that like goes for like your heart, your organs and other things too. Like, you know, so that's one of the reasons why like modern bodybuilding is like more dangerous than classic bodybuilding, you know, like bodybuilding pre nineties, pre 1990s, you know, bodybuilding pre 1990s insulin use wasn't really a thing. There was some growth hormone use, but it was low dose growth hormone use and it wasn't combined with insulin generally. But then you know, actually we can see the pictures with Dorian Yates, the black and white pictures that he's famous for. That was, uh, you know, 1992, 1993. And then, you know, the, the, if you just look at, um, his, his gut and his face in those comparison photos, um, between 1992 and 1993, um, you, you know, the, the thing that changed there, what, what was, what was changed was that, you know, now there's a, a high amount of insulin going on there. That that was the big change. So systemic IGF-1 levels uh, went way up. And you can see uh, the face uh, changed in that one year. And um, also the gut changed. So, yeah. And then it looks like also like it looks like, you know, an air compressor was connected to his muscles, you know, and everything got, you know, so much more full and monstrous at the same time. So, you know, there's there's pluses and minuses, you know, from a bodybuilding standpoint about doing this. And, um, you know, we're just kind of discussing what Jonas, um, you know, his experience and, you know, trying to explain, you know, why, cause he says that his face and his gut got permanently bigger. Um, and, uh, uh, he says he, he did insulin. He says only a couple cycles, nothing crazy. Um, but I would say that he's like unusually susceptible to those side effects, but, like one year or more is and people are like using it you know like like using this stuff they're they're gonna get like you're gonna see side effects because you're like self-inducing acromegaly 
like, like you're get this condition, acromegaly, it's a natural condition. And we see like what the effects are and like why it happens. That's all known is because of the high systemic IGF one levels. And then if you look at pictures of people like with acromegaly and then compare them to like modern bodybuilders after, you know, these guys have, you know, really gotten big, you can see similarities and, and you can see like, Oh, okay. So like, you know, this is like the same thing going on here. So you have to know that like with modern bodybuilding, and that 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 is part of it um and and that's why it occurs so all right let's get on to the next question um marco asks hi dan i always listen to your podcast it's great very honest and informative i'm on a low dose of test 250 milligrams a week i've gone up to 500 milligrams in the past i always get water retention especially in the face what do you recommend or have you had experience with this I thought low dose doesn't need AI. Again, love the book, Ultimate Guide to Roids, and the podcast. Yeah, so everybody's different with the testosterone. You know, one guy might take 500 milligrams of testosterone per week, and he may need to take AI every day. You know, maybe he needs to take like one milligram even of Arimidex every day. And another guy might take 5,000 milligrams per week, and he might not need to take AI. And, and he might not take AI. And me and and what I'm saying, like one guy might need to do it. You know, the guy maybe the guy on 500 test, maybe he if he didn't take a, a AI dose like that, he would get gyno. You know, but then you have another guy who's on you know 10 times the dose, and he doesn't need an AI, and he doesn't get gyno. Uh, and and so this is a huge genetic variability, and that's like really a thing with anabolics is that these side effects are extremely genetic dependent okay so like one guy might get side effects from roids and or my, one guy might get this side effect and then the other guy doesn't get that side effect he gets a different side effect or he doesn't get a side effect right so like like to say that like the side effects are even and and like um like oh everybody gets the same side effects that that's not accurate the side effects and ability to tolerate these things is hugely variable one, one some per, people cannot tolerate these things the these anabolics you know these steroids these hormones uh some people cannot tolerate these things even like at low doses and other people can tolerate massive amounts and 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 this is like from like even like a health standpoint whereas like what you know if you look at their uh if you look at their blood work you look at their blood pressure uh, you you know and uh and and mental side effects too like you know like you look at their you, you know yes you like how is the libido or something like that like um or or like you know are you getting gyno or something these are so different from person to person and and so w when you say like you thought that um low dose test doesn't need ai like yeah you might have read that but and and like you know for for some people yeah they don't need they don't need that but you know a lot of people do need ai on low dose test a lot of people do and uh you know then there's going to be some genetic big estrogen producers out there you know guys that really aromatize because it's just the luck of the draw and those guys are going to you know definitely need you know ai even on low dose test or else you know they're going to get gyno uh, so yeah, just making that clear again that, uh, you know, whereas some guys, you know, you, you know, like, like for me, me, um, like producing a lot of red blood cells and blood pressure are things that I'm like easily susceptible to, but another guy might be able to use like huge doses of, of hormones and like not get those side effects and and it's it's amazing to see like like it's it's amazing like how some people seem to have like uh some immunity to some of these side effects but then you know it might be other guys main side effects like like, like me you know so these it's, it's just goes to show that not everyone as far as side effects is affected the same way okay but okay here's a difference is that the you know the mechanism of action of anabolics is the accumulation of dietary proteins okay so it's the the reason why a natural can eat all that protein and he do, doesn't gain muscle and he can do all that weightlifting and he doesn't gain muscle is because his body cannot hold on to that stuff it cannot accumulate 
those dietary proteins. But when you take the roids in a dosage dependent manner, there is accumulation of dietary proteins in the body. And so that's why roids have a dose dependent effect on muscle mass, strength, and size that is very well established is because the mechanism of action of these hormones in muscle is increasing the amount of protein from your diet that you can hang on to, okay? Your ability to keep that protein in your body, okay? And it's the same way as like, you know, you drink a beer, you know, maybe you, you drink one beer, you get buzzed a little bit, probably not because you're a bodybuilder. So maybe you drink three beers and you get buzzed a little bit. Okay. You drink 10 beers and you get drunk. Okay. It's the same thing with the hormones. Okay. You take 500 milligrams and yeah, your muscles are going to get a bit bigger and you're going to get a bit stronger. And you know, you can probably make some pretty good progress on that, but you know, you take a 2000 milligrams and the effect is stronger. That's just the way it is. And you know, I definitely don't think that, you know, telling the truth about this is some kind of thing that's going to be like, uh, like don't let the kids know that or something. Cause I actually think it's a good thing to let the kids know that because then they're going to be like, Oh, so is that something I want to do or not? Or is that something I shouldn't pursue because you know, they don't want to go there. You know, maybe, maybe if they learned that, that this is actually what's required in order to be, you, you know, like some kind of, you know, like alien, you, you know, is, is, you know, definitely not modest use of PEDs. So, um, you know, maybe that would make them be like, oh, okay, well, so, so I wouldn't want to go there because me personally, if I would have known that before I started, that would have changed things for me. If I would have known before I started what actually was going to be required because me, like everybody else, I thought I was going to take 600 milligrams of uh, testosterone and turn into basically like an, a pro bodybuilder, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I was disappointed and learned very quickly that that was not the case. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, let, okay. Let, let's get a, let's get one more question in here. Okay. Garrett asked a question for you, Dan, just got back into bodybuilding a few months ago after being off for six months and I'm five, nine, two Oh four pounds empty with abs, just peeking through and trying to get up to 220. I'm only running 1200 milligrams of test a week right now. Can I expect to hit that goal or do I need more firepower? I'm putting in the work daily and eating the food. No screwing off there. 4,500 calories, 500 grams carbs, 400 grams protein, and 100 grams of fat. Okay, yeah. So good job getting the 400 grams of protein and everything because like, um, yeah, you're like on super subs. So like you can absorb and use more protein. That is the mechanism of action of the super subs. So good thing you're doing that. You know, that's probably why, you know, you're 5'9", 200 pounds with abs which is huge. That's bigger than Frank Zane. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so you're on 1200 milligrams of test and you're hoping to get up to 220. So gain 15 pounds of muscle and you're on, uh, 1200 milligrams of test. You, you know what? It depends on, on like your lifts and how much like gym performance you're able to perf uh, improve, man. So like, I don't, I don't, I would say that like, you, you know, if you make yourself like gain weight, if you make yourself gain weight, like you're going to get, uh, have an increase in gym performance. Like you're taking 1200 milligrams of tests. So if you can just combine gaining body weight and taking 1200 milligrams of test and then going to the gym, like you're going to have an increase in like your, your like amount of reps you can do and like your strength and amount of sets that you can do with a certain amount of weight and stuff like that. Okay. Because that's just the way it goes when you're taking that. Okay. But as far as like, I would have to know your goal. Like, are you saying to gain 15 pounds of body weight with zero fat gain? Because then that's probably going to be harder to do, especially because you're already a pretty big dude, like five, nine, 205 pounds with abs is not small. Again, that is 15 pounds more muscular than Frank Zane. Okay. Mr. Olympia. Okay. So it, it, if you are like that and you want to like, uh, you know, like really, uh, go up like 15 pounds more like solid muscle, you know, with no fat gain at all, I would say that, you know, you'd probably have a tough time. You'd probably have a tough time doing that on 1200 milligrams of test E only, but you could definitely gain 15 pounds of muscle and everything. Like if you, if you went up like a lot in body weight, you know, like instead of like 220, 
you know, like going up to like maybe 240 or something, then yeah, you could. And you probably wouldn't need to up the dose. All right. So that's going to be the last uh, question for the podcast today. It was fun talking to you guys. And uh, I'll be coming up with another episode for you guys uh, real soon here. So make sure to go pick up Ultimate Guide to Roids, 109 page ebook by Dan, the bodybuilder from Thailand. You know, if you just go to bodybuilderinthailand.com, it's, uh, I think, I think it's the first article on the home page where you can check it out and read like 20 pages. It's definitely worth it. It's my best content. You know, if you like the podcast, the book will blow you away.